Hello YouTubes and welcome back to Tully's Marine Tales. I am very excited for this video because in it I interview a marine biologist from Tasmania um, who's working on a very special animal down there called the Morgian skate. Um, a skate is kind of like a ray and this animal is on the verge of going extinct. It only lives down in Tasmania. It, um, its numbers have declined drastically in the last couple of years and so it, it is on the verge of going extinct and if it does go extinct it will be the first ever shark or ray species in our modern times to go extinct in the world so it's a huge story it's a big deal um, David and a whole bunch of scientists and politicians down there are really trying to do a lot of work to stop that from happening so this was an incredible conversation on a really important topic and so I really hope you guys enjoy it Cool. So I'm uh, David Moreno. I'm a research fellow at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies at the University of Tasmania. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining the channel, David. It's great to have you here. Um, and we're talking about a very special animal on today's episode. But before we get there, um, can you tell us a little bit about the area that you work? I mean, we're, we're thinking about Tasmania here. And I think a lot of people have heard it, but don't really know <laughs> much about it. So can you just give us a brief introduction to where you work, Tasmania, and then specifically um, the harbor that we're going to be focusing in on today? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, like you say, it's uh, uh, kind of one of those things that everyone has heard of, but no one really knows where it is or or what's going on here. Uh, so Tasmania is a very small island, uh, and it's one of the states in Tasmania. So it's a small island to the southeast of, of the Australian mainland and uh, a pretty wild place. So uh, even though it's a small place, very high index of biodiversity and endemism. So a lot of species that can only be found here. Isolation creates uh, a unique species. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously the most famous are the, the Tassie devil and uh, uh, the thylacine, the, the Tasmanian tiger, which unfortunately is now extinct. Uh, but there's uh, a lot more species that can only be found here. So a so, uh, uh, very special island, uh, very special forests and, and ecosystems. And uh, the place that I am lucky enough to work in is Macquarie Harbor, which is a small coastal estuary that is in the west coast of Tasmania. Now, the west coast of Tasmania is is a very remote, very isolated place. Very few people live on that side. And, and uh, actually, from Macquarie Harbor down, uh, most of the state is actually uninhabited and, and it's not even accessible by road. So it's a very wild place, very uh, uh, amazing bit of wilderness. Sounds like a beautiful place to work. I'm very jealous. <laughs> but um, even though it seems to be quite remote, um, Macquarie Harbor is uh, quite a lot of human impacts going on in the system. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, uh, it's a very unique ecosystem, but it also has a lot of features that that make it very attractive. Uh, uh, to human activities or have been uh, since European colonization, really. So the harbor has seen a very long story of multiple industries coming and going and, and uh, uh, having an impact on the environment. So early on, there was uh, very intense uh, uh, logging for hue and pine, uh, which turned into uh, uh, very intense mining upstream. Uh, so a lot of heavy metals made their way to the harbor and they're still there. It's one of the most polluted water bodies in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. And uh, then the the uh, very complex hydrography of the system got changed irrevocably uh, in the 70s when when several major rivers were dammed in Tasmania for for the construction of hydroelectricity uh, mm -hmm. uh, production and more recently it's been a site of a lot of controversy due to salmonid aquaculture so aquaculture for salmon and trout uh, uh, so that's as you can see that's sort of one in many different impacts that are still affecting the harbor and that have modified it. Uh, when, I, when I was reading up for, for this interview, there was a quote that I saw, which I really liked, sort of death of a thousand cuts. It's just been this like continuous pressures, various pressures throughout the years. Um, and yeah, this system has has seen a lot of, of different uh, impacts and negative impacts. So uh, in terms of, of the state it's in today, do you think it's in a healthy state or an unhealthy state or just the system itself? So the biggest problem really is that the system is naturally quite a challenging place to live in if you're an animal. Uh, it's it's naturally low in dissolved oxygen. It has very complex uh, uh, dynamics. There's a, a very big, strong mix of, of freshwater and saltwater coming in. 
Uh, and on top of that, all the fresh water that comes in through the heavily forested areas is actually quite heavy with tannins. So the water is very dark, which blocks the light coming in. So uh, even though it's a shallow coastal estuary, there's zero light penetration. So it's more like a deep sea environment, uh, which means also there's not a lot of uh, animals here. Really, you have to be a very tough, very well adapted uh, uh, animal to, to survive here. So the baseline is already a quite challenging place. And like you say, all these little impacts uh, uh, start adding up. And in the recent past, we've actually seen uh, uh, some strong si uh, signals of environmental degradation and uh, uh, ecosystem decay. Uh, so it's right. it's really, the system is in a state of flux. It's always changing, but, but definitely I would call it a, an impacted ecosystem. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned sort of the only animals that can really live here are the really tough and, and well adapted ones. So I think that leads us nicely onto uh, the hero of our story. <laughs> Again, something that I think not many of us have heard before. So can you please uh, introduce the Morgian skate to us? Yeah, of course. So the Morgian skate is a type of ray. Uh, uh, they're related to sharks and, and stingrays and other animals like that. Uh, and uh, this particular one is a very special one because it's it's rather unique even amongst other rays and sharks. It's, uh, to our knowledge, the only uh, skate that can leave its entire life cycle in brackish water, so in a mix of fresh and, and salt water. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's been unchanged for millions and millions of years. Its, uh, uh, its name actually comes from the uh, bioregion in, uh, um, in Gondwana, so... Uh, it's it's come to us from that far back, uh, relatively unchanged. So it's really one of those living relic species, and uh, and it's very well adapted to live in this challenging place. Uh, so much so, actually, that this is the only place in the world where it's found. Uh, uh, it was discovered not too long ago. We only found out that it was a separate species and that it existed here uh, in the late nineties, uh, and and it was only described as a species in two thousand and seven. Wow. And uh, we know it from this system and another one, and, and we now know that it is no longer present in that secondary system. So Macquarie Harbor is the only place in the whole world where you can find this animal. Very, very special. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, you've been working sort of on this Mojian skate for a couple of years now, and you've been putting together, I mean, it's it's new to science. We only realized there was a new species in 2007. And so, you know, when that usually happens, we, we try and figure out what is going on with the species. So I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, in 2014, you started surveying sort of the abundance and how many individuals are in the system? So we, we started actually even a little bit earlier than that. We've been working on a species since uh, 2010. We've started sort of trying to understand the basics of its biology and, and, and sort of trying to figure out how it was uh, able to survive in this unique place. But yes, in, in, in 2013, we started a project that uh, uh, wanted to look at sort of the status of the population, its health, and how it was interacting with some of those human impacts uh, uh, that go on in the harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also, as our research went along, started to see signs of, of population stress and, and signs that maybe the, the population in Macquarie Harbor was not in the best shape. And uh, so we put a lot of focus on trying to understand the trajectory of the population and uh, uh, what was going on. Uh, obviously very concerned about the low oxygen levels in the water column. So try to understand also how these animals are interacting with that low oxygen. Mm -hmm. And you've kind of sort of rung the alarm bells for the species that it's pretty much on the verge of extinction. Um, did you, Was that found out through the sort of uh, study where you looked at how many there were across a number of years? Yeah, so as we were looking at, at these interactions with oxygen, uh, we, we got our first glimpse at a uh, mass mortality event that was related with, with environmental conditions in the harbor. Uh, obviously, we we saw it only on the animals that we were tracking at the time, but that uh, uh, concerned us quite a lot. So so we immediately set up a, a much broader uh, population surveying uh, uh, project. And uh, now we've been able to confirm that from 2014 to 2021, uh, we've seen a reduction of about 50% on the population and it's worth noting that this is the last remaining population anywhere on earth of this animal so this is it and uh and, and there are other concerning signs that point to the fact that this is sort of a, a downward trajectory it's not a one-off event mm -hmm. uh and and also there have been important changes to the structure of the population so particularly we're seeing 
uh, a significant decline in recruitment. So no new animals are being born into the population, which is mm -hmm. uh, uh, quite important uh, for any population to sort of grow and, and, and be healthy. So uh, obviously that raised a lot of concern, which led to us uh, putting out a report sort of uh, uh, calling out the need for immediate intervention in order to avoid the extinction of the species. Yeah. Do you think, um, you mentioned a mass mortality event. So do you think it's sort of a, a long, slow decline coupled with these like big mortality events? And then what do you think is sort of driving these, these mass mortality events? Yeah, so so we actually think it's exactly that. It's a combination of two factors. There's uh, uh, the degradation of the environment has sort of put this chronic, this ongoing pressure onto the animal, which uh, uh, has sort of, if you think about it, an animal can only tolerate so much. And even though this animal is very well adapted and has a very broad range of, of tolerance thresholds uh, to survive this system, by having the decline of the oxygen be permanent, uh, basically, that lowers the tolerance threshold of the animals, which makes them more vulnerable to other events. So then once in a while, you'll get these uh, uh, one-time large impact events, uh, uh, sometimes related to weather, sometimes related to uh, uh, specific uh, uh, climatic events in, in a season. And, uh, and with that decreased tolerance, then the animals are just not able to cope uh, with what they would normal under normal circumstances probably be able to cope quite well with. What are you said you've put out this report and you're trying to sort of um, really gather support in terms of interventions and do you have support from the government and what what are some of the solutions that are being worked on currently? Yeah, so so uh, one of the most challenging things uh, aspects of working with the species is that, like I said, the none of the problems are simple. So there isn't yeah. one magic bullet that you said, oh, if we tackle this thing, we we would just solve the situation. So. Uh, that's really been one of the biggest challenges working in this system for the longest time. But fortunately, uh, uh, with all the work that, that we've been doing, uh, there really has been a lot of attention here in Australia, in Tasmania and at the federal level. So we've been working with regulators really closely and uh, um, trying to come up with a plan to, to sort of make sure that the species persists. Yeah. Uh, and that yeah. probably will look uh, there, there, like I said, there's a couple of different things that have to be done. We think that we are at the stage with the population where probably some XC2 measurements uh, uh, will have to be uh, undertaken. So taking animals out of the harbor uh, for things like captive breeding or captive rearing of eggs as an emergency measurement mm -hmm. and as a bit of an insurance policy and protection, uh, 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 having some animals removed from the system while we deal with the system. Obviously, uh, these animals have evolved for so long to to thrive in this so challenging ecosystem that uh, the fate of the species is very closely linked to the fate of the harbor. So uh, uh, obviously any discussion about recovering the species has to include the idea of recovering the, the ecosystem as a whole. So yeah. uh, uh, that's one of the big discussions that we're having. And just uh, like I said, those conditions, the, the darkness in the harbor, the remoteness of the area, uh, these animals are, are very cryptic. So they like hiding, they don't move a lot. So just there's a lot of logistical challenges just studying the species. So mm -hmm. so also having a way of monitoring the population and, and, and figuring out if any of the actions that are being taken are having an effect on the population, that's become a real big challenge. So uh, we're trying to tackle that with uh, uh, anything you can think of. So new technologies, new techniques, uh, uh, revisiting different ways of doing things, uh, uh, just trying to improve the way that we monitor the population. So. Yeah, so we have sort of a separate strategy trying to recover the animals that are still in the harbor, trying to tackle the environmental problems in the area, and, and at the same time creating this insurance population somewhere off site. And uh, fortunately, there has been a lot of interest and a lot of support. Uh, so, so we are hopeful that there is still time that we sort of detected this with enough time that we can do something about it. That's amazing. And um, that's... It uh, sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I'm getting anxious just listening to you speaking about it. I'm sure you have a, a huge team and lots of people trying to work on this problem. And um, yeah, new tech and new solutions. I think it's uh, it's going to be a very exciting 
time in terms of our world, you know, a lot of these uh, species are facing extinction, maybe not to the extent that the Morgian skate is, but we're, we're in, a, in a time where we have to start thinking about solutions. And, and I think this might be a bit of a catalyst for even for other species that may be facing threats going forward. Yeah, absolutely. And we think this is uh, uh, the biggest uh, thing to be gained here uh, beyond the conservation of the species itself is the lessons that we're going to learn. The reality is that uh, the Magian Skate is acting a little bit like a canary in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Macquarie Harbor, because it's a closed system, basically uh, focuses all these human impacts into a single place. Uh, but the reality is that coastal shark and ray species, all fish really are, are going to be facing similar habitat degradation, similar conditions mm -hmm. uh, uh, into the future. So uh, this really is a bit of a test about whether we can act on time and uh, and and how we respond to to the situation and like you say it's it's about recognizing expertise in different places and building teams large teams of 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 many people and 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 bringing different fields of expertise together to try to tackle complex problems and uh, yeah we are hopeful that this will be a, a success a success story into the future sort of teaching us some important lessons into uh, uh, what clearly is uh, uh, a very challenging future in terms of, of changing climates and, and changing oceans. Yeah, I think that's a brilliant note to end on. <laughs> we'll be watching uh, the story as it unfolds in the future. Um, yeah, I wish I wish you all the best of luck. We, we're hoping, we're rooting for the Morgian skate, <laughs> this very specialized animal. And yeah, we, we just hope that, uh, as you said, uh, you know, you've rung the alarm bells with, with enough time and there's enough... Um, inputs for and um, motivation for solutions going forward. So thank you so much for, for being on the channel and thank you so much for chatting to us. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs>